Alrighty, so what we got here is a very simple breakdown of what all these crazy instruments are. So here's the thing. Uh, when I got into this, the first guitar I was actually hoping to grab was this one. I really only wanted this one. I didn't know anything about Yamaha guitars, didn't know what the quality was like, didn't really care, didn't know about the Yamaha Weddingtons or any of these type of things. But what I did want was a Blue Saracen because I'm a huge fan um, and I wanted this particular instrument. So this was always one of the bucket list items um, that I wanted and I got this one. So this one right here was one of the very last ones that I actually got. This one's pretty cool. This one is the seventh one that he signed back in 93 and it was uh, actually sold to me by the guy that owned the music store where he grew up playing. And that guy also was his first manager through the Never Look Back plaid albums. Uh, you know, it was pretty cool that he was actually involved with that. So I got to know him. He's a really nice guy. So let's go over some of the details that make these things kind of wild. So this is technically the first guitar I got. Now this is an RGZ 820R, okay? Um, and what we're gonna do is just really just kind of give you the explanation of what all those little acronyms mean. Um, so the letter identifications of what they are is this, and let's just start with the basic one. So this one, well, let's, <laughs> let's just start with the most complicated one actually. So this one right here is what they would call the flagship. And this right in the back, let's take a look at the name here. Um, that says 821 DMR. And what that means is it has direct mounted pickups. So that is what the D means. The M is what stands for maple fretboard, okay, versus rosewood, and then reverse headstock, that's the R, okay? Now, all of these guitars, with as expensive as they can be, this one was, I think, a, a $1,000 model uh, for what it was, every one of these things have these badges, okay? This little oval badge, if you ever see it in pictures and nobody ever takes a look at it, you can see that this was made in Taiwan, okay? But it was a incredible guitar, you know, with uh, the same Japanese precision and the factory was, you know, very, very well uh, maintained by the luthiers and it's just the incredible instruments. But that was considered to be the top of the line of the RGZ series with that particular headstock and that particular logo. Now, one of the first guitars that I actually got when I started going nuts on reverb was this guy. This is still technically an RGZ series. Totally, totally different headstock. Completely different. I don't even know why they call it an RGZ. They should have just called it something totally different. But this right here, the reason I was interested in this one uh, is because of this reason. You can see it has the go-to tuners and also says made in Japan. So this is a Japanese made RGZ-3, okay? It's not a 321, it's not a three whatever, it's literally a three. So that's what they made this one. Now, they would actually consider this one to be a fairly intermediate uh, particular guitar. I played it, uh, the stock pickups are crap. They're just, eh. Now this, I think uh, the guy that upgraded put a super distortion in. It's just, a, it's a strange guitar. I feel like the, the profile of the neck is a very different one. Um, it's not something that resonates with me, so I really haven't put a lot of time and, and effort into it. Probably could throw some other pickups in it and see what happens, but I just kept it, um, you know, usually for reference. Now, let's go to the order now that we know, for example, this one. Uh, this is a very strange one. This one is a 721 DMR. Now, one of the neat things about this particular instrument is that it's got the same type of scallop frets on these last five frets here, okay? It's got the offset um, uh, mother pearl inlays, or I'm sorry, abalone inlays, and this one also has the reverse headstock. And let's just look at it right here. One of the dead giveaways, if you're ever gonna look at it. Let's see if I can get the light on there. Okay, see how it just says Yamaha on the back of this right here on the tuners? That right there means that is gonna be a Taiwan made. Okay, it does have the stamp of Yamaha, but it does not have the made in Japan. And you can see here, it has that badge. Okay, so we know that that's made in Taiwan. I will compare this just because I have to put them side by side. These are both technically very similar, but you can see the one on the right looks gold and the other one looks silver. That's because the one in the gold, and I actually changed out hardware from silver, or actually it was black. I changed that to gold because it looks gold and it just looks cool. But that one right there, if I take off uh, that cover right there, you can see it's the same color as this. So it's the age of the glue in that glitter that's actually in these bodies is just the same type of glitter that you used in, uh, 
in elementary school to make uh, projects. It's, it's a very simple glitter flake. It's nothing special. They literally just put probably tack adhesive all over the body of this thing and then just dumped glitter and then just shook it off. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to look at it in some ways, but I think this thing is the jam. It's in a great, amazing playing instrument and everything like that. So I, I particularly love it. Now the original pickups that came with this, this is stock. I just put another cover over that. Uh, I put some Evos on this from a gym that I got and it's just an amazing sounding guitar, but the original ones, uh, they were kind of a cream color and it didn't make sense. So the knobs are cream and these were cream. Um, it just didn't really fit the body of the guitar. So I swapped it to this and now it looks like it's insane. All right, so now we'll talk about the order of how they work together. Now, the, the numbers to define them, uh, actually we'll start over here. This one actually is probably, I would say the lowest grade of all of them. And I know this is strange, but you can see that there's a big, huge, I'm restoring this guitar because it's all busted, but you can see that it's gonna have a pick guard on it and it's got a humbucker and then a single coil humbucker. So it's an HSH setup. Uh, it's got a pretty decent trim. The tremolo is not anything uh, to write home about. I think it's like a TRS-101. So it's kind of the entry level trim. So it's not the greatest, but the neck is really nice. Um, the hardware, you can see it's just chrome. You can see how it's got the Yamaha stamp on it. And then this one right here is an RGZ-321P. The P means pick guard, okay? So this is a similar one. This is actually uh, the, the, the 421s, the difference between the 421s and the, and the 5, uh, and I think actually this is a 5 or 6, this might be a 621. Yeah, this is a 621D, okay? So they do make a, a, another level uh, 521 that's in the, uh, the line. I don't have that one. Um, but this one right here is probably upper middle. So this one has an HSH as well, but these are the direct mounted pickups. So that's what the D stands for. Okay, now I don't know why they didn't put an R on here. Well, that's stupid. It doesn't have a reverse headstock, but anyways. But you can see, that's what I was talking about with the color change. Um, so the, the clear coats definitely uh, got affected by sunlight. So you can see what that is. But anyways, so this one right here is a 621, um, but it's C, you can see those five scalloped frets and the offset um, fret markers. So that's that. All right, so this one right here, this one's a very, very special one. This is a cool. I got a bunch of these instruments. So this one right here is a 621, okay? Um, and then this would be an R. So that's what this would be. So let's flip this guy over. We should be able to see, and I forgot, I'm sorry. It's got an RGZ 621P-R, which means pick guard and reverse headstock, okay? So that's this particular guitar. And then we'll look at this guy. Now this one you would say is pretty much exactly the same other than the crazy sparkly finish. This one, however, has the same label. All right, it says RGZ 621 PR, but what's pretty sick, and I've got this on a different video, now if you take the neck pocket off and you can actually see underneath the neck and with the, uh, the joined, this was a special model that was only done through, I think it was Musician's Friend or something like that. Somebody told me uh, that's what they did. They did a limited run of these in this particular color. It's exactly the same specs as that particular guitar, but because of the finish and the limited release, it has an X. Only in the neck pocket. You'd only know it if you took the neck off. So if you do own these guitars, you should take off the neck pocket because you will see weird anomalies uh, in here. I've taken all these things off and I've been filming all this stuff for a while. Um, but anyways, there's, there's some weird discrepancies between this. Some will say RGZ, some will say RGX. And again, I don't understand the main difference between those. So this one right here, this one's also a very cool one. It's got Let It Rock. Now this one's just rad. The color is just insane. Um, I got this one from Japan. It was on an eBay uh, ad that uh, is one of those eBay ads. It's like the, they use the same exact stock photos for like 12 different ads. So you think that's got to be a scam. It actually didn't turn out to be a scam. It was just like multiple sellers trying to sell it out of multiple sites. So whoever sold it won. Now this one right here does not have that stamp. So you're thinking, hmm, this one's made in Japan. All right, what's the difference between that and this? Well, check out the headstock just when you're shopping. It does not have the Japan logo on it. Now this one says, oh, YG621. Now it doesn't have the P, and obviously it's not a reverse headstock, so it doesn't have the R, but it should at least have the P. So there's discrepancy number one, okay? Now this one right here also has 
this really, really high end, this is their top of the line um, tremolo, okay? And it's got some weird locking mechanisms. If you look really close, it's got two sets of these rollers down here that just don't make a lot of sense. Do you see that? You're not gonna see that on trems anywhere. They're very weird. But what they do is they lock the intonation in place so they don't ever slip. So it's kind of a cool feature. And also look at the size of <laughs> those Allen things right here. I mean, they're massive compared to these right here. Those are like the normal size. This thing is like, what's up? That's huge. So anyways, that particular guitar is a YG. Now I guess it's because it's the Let It Rock series and maybe they were produced in Japan or something like that and maybe offshore or something like that. I don't know. But this one does say, and it's hard to see where it's at, but the serial number is actually not carved onto the back of the headstock. I think it's over here. Let me put it down. I think it's, yeah, there it is. See that? Made in Taiwan. It's upside down. Let's see if we can look at it better. But it's a stamp on the body. There you go. So it's made in Taiwan. That's the actual stamp. So that is another huge discrepancy between where this was made and what Ty Taiwan fan uh, factory and all that kind of jazz. So now let's go to the next one. Now this one right here is uh, considered to be one of the top of the line guitars as well. It's very similar to this one. This is the highest end model that they made for the RGZ line. Uh, this one right here uh, was very, very similar as well. It still had the same upgrades as far as pickups and hardware and everything else. But you can see this one, it says just the Yamaha TRS Pro, okay, which is probably as close to a Ibanez uh, Low Pro uh, as you can get. It's a very, very good trim. It locks really well. This one was beat to hell. Somebody even put a MIDI pickup here. As you can see the screw holes. Uh, I got this one from Russia, which was really cool for about 300 bucks. Uh, cleaned up, restored it. Uh, and again, it's got the um, abalone. Uh, offset and the scallops right there on the last five. These the same thing, abalone. Now this guitar, if you want to just look back at it real quick, regular dots. Nothing abalone, just mother of pearl, but they are the same type of setup, but that's a lower end version. Okay? Now when we look at this particular guitar, this one has a different pickup configuration. Obviously, since we are still learning in class, we know it's not an R because it doesn't have a reversed headstock. It doesn't have an M, so it's not a maple fretboard. And so, what is it? This one is a 612. Okay, so it's an RGZ 612P. P meaning what? Pick guard. Yep, exactly. So this one is a very, very cool guitar. Uh, when I took the pick guard off, it actually has the same cavity as um, the this guitar. So you could actually throw that pick guard into this guitar and it would work exactly the same. And that would just can turn it from a 612 to a 621. So that's how you read the numbers. If you're doing a 12, it's a um, HSS, humbucker single single, versus H, uh, HS, H, and like this, okay? And yes, you're not seeing anything crazy. I do have two identical versions of that guitar. So what did you learn? What's that? It's an R. And if we have this, What's that? Pick guard. Yep, so it's P. This right here, that'd be a 12. This right here, would be a 21. Uh, let's see here, let's see here, let's see here. Mm, anything else weird? Anything else weird? Weird, 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 weird. Ah, okay, now we're getting to the weird. So this one right here. This, I would say, if they did an RGX versus an RGZ jump, this would make a lot more sense. Because this one right here, Totally different headstock design, different, you know, body, different everything like that when you put them side by side. Now, I actually did this swirl. This guitar looks very, very similar to just like one of these guitars. It had a, just a basic red paint job, nothing special. Uh, I think it was actually this color when it started. Um, and I completely restored it and, you know, changed the pickups. These are parallel axis pickups. Um, and an Evo in the neck, but that one's a really, really cool one. Uh, on that video, Lost, I, I featured this guitar, and the tone on this thing is sick. Um, but very, very different. It's got this kind of chrome blade that goes up in the side. Now, some of those don't have this. What this actually refers to, which is the Keep On Rockin' Rolling, produced by Yamaha, okay? And then this one, Special Edition 
612 JS. So the 612, obviously you know now, is gonna be the HSS pickup. The JS, not sure exactly what this means because it doesn't have anything to do with an R. The S, I don't know, maybe it was an upgraded pickups, but it did have this crazy uh, trembler that I was talking about earlier that had this really, really fantastic, you know, crazy, you know, double, double roller type of thing that locks in the trem. Um, but this one I got, the reason I was excited about it, take a look again. Not the Yamaha, Yamaha stamped, uh, those are the go-to tuners, and look, made in Japan. So this is a legitimate uh, Yamaha um, from Japan, and also these things are kind of a dead giveaway, these little pieces right here. So if they have a stamp on them, they're typically higher end than say these guys, which they didn't put too much work into. They're just these kind of like little blades that just hold them together. So I think only one of the two of the guitars that I have down here, this one right here has these guys, okay? And then this one has those guys. So I don't know what the, the big difference is, even though that this is the more higher end, more expensive guitar than that one. They just chose to use those parts. I guess it's just a different, uh, different, different machine that cut them. All right, so to finish this whole thing up, let's talk about the Japanese versus the um, Taiwan-made RGZs, okay? The RGX series, uh, some of these actually are RGXs, uh, just a couple of them. Like, for example, that one's definitely an RGX. Uh, but I do have another one. I'm not 100% sure this one doesn't even have the RGX on it. And you can see that the, the label was printed to be bigger, but it's not. So... I don't know if they got lazy and just didn't type it right. I don't know what it is. But you can, again, that giveaway, look at how it just says Yamaha. Now, when you look at the back of uh, some of the other ones, where's... Let's go to... Do, 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 do. Anyway, so go to tuners is that giveaway that's made in Japan. Okay, that's going to be at high end. Uh, these guys, this right here, this is a Yamaha Weddington. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, the RGZ or RGX line. But this is what I was trying to talk to you about. That has the stamp Japan made on it. Okay, so that's a totally different thing. If you ever see where it's stamped on Japan, you can automatically know, hopefully it's not gonna be a rip off, but if you see those right there, that's kind of a dead giveaway that that instrument is made in Japan. Now you wouldn't know it, but these two bases, when you look at them, side by side, the black one and the uh, Olympic white one, which one is made in Japan and which one is made in Taiwan? You would not be able to tell me. You'd play them, you wouldn't be able to tell. Same exact components, same bridges, same... Now, those were different bridges on here, but the point is it's the same pickups, same everything, same quality, same paint jobs. There was not a single thing different between either one, but that one's made in Taiwan, and that one is made in Japan. I'm lucky to have two of them. I'm lucky to have one of them, but I have two. And I got that one by accident, just hanging out with a buddy at a guitar store, and he had it on consignment. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Grief, that thing's making noise up there. All right, so to finish this thing off, uh, I did an entire video explaining what I did with this. I swapped out the pickups from here and put the parallel axis, which Blues actually played on there. This one I got, uh, this one's stock. I won this off of eBay when somebody actually used my video to actually sell this guitar, and they were talking about <laughs> all the stuff, so I ended up winning the auction. Guy, when he was sending it out, I was like, oh, wait, you're the guy with the video, and I'm like, yeah, that's right, I shut it down so I could win the auction, and I did, so there it is. But anyway, so I got this guitar, uh, and what I'm actually going to do with this guitar is I'm actually going to make it like this, but the yellow version, the one that's actually hand-painted, so it's going to be a, a whole project. So uh, I'm also going to do a comparison of the stock pups compared to the parallel axis pups, and I will tell you, it's very difficult to actually understand and justify why, because those are not stock Yamaha pickups. Those were actually made by DiMarzio for Blue Saraceno, custom for him, and they are absolutely the tone of the Plaid album. Or even, you know, uh, the, what it was, Plaid, Never Look Back, and then Hair Pick. Anyway, one of, one, of, one of the albums, I mean, it's just a spot on tone. I mean, they're just, they're incredible. But this one right here, um, let's take a look at the back of this one. Now, this one right here is two humbuckers, no single coil. It's kind of the rarest one. Every single one of these guitars, every single one of these other guitars have a middle single coil. It's just the way it is. When we look at this, the neck joint in the back, totally different. No stamp on the bottom, okay? But when we look at this, what do we got here? Go to tuners. So we know this one is made in Japan. And we get a little bit closer in this one. 
Uh, okay, can't see it. Okay, but you can see it's pretty close. That's made in Japan, okay? So that one right there, this is proof that these particular guitars, and if you look at the model number, which actually isn't written anywhere on this, because it's Blue Saracino's guitar, but this one is a RGZ 820R. Not an 821, not a 812 or whatever you want to call it, but the 820 means dual humbuckers. Now one of the things that's really super cool about this particular guitar, it's exactly the same as this. Now this plaid is as stock as that. Those are actually gonna be, when I compare them, they will sound identical. I mean, they're gonna be different guitars. This one lays, weighs like a feather. Uh, and this one, eh, it's actually pretty light. All these guitars are fairly light, but this one actually weighs a little bit more. It's got a darker rosewood on it compared to that. But the, the quality of this one and the quality of this one, they're identical. Now I will say this, this switch, is a three-way switch. I did not like that, and it doesn't coil tap anything like that. Now, Blues is really just a this or that kind of a pickup kind of guy. But I actually upgraded this when I put this in there, and I put my own five-way switch in there. So I get the coil taps, and I get the single coil sound out of there, and it makes a huge difference, and it's, it's definitely worth doing the mod. But these pickups, when I had to actually mod them, only came with two wires. So I actually, when I took these pickups out and I actually mod them, I actually go, I had to go open the coils, get the wires and cut them apart so I could actually separate all four of the coils and then create another lead to do that. I don't recommend it if you don't know what you're doing, but it was definitely worth the mod. Uh, those other pickups are actually in another guitar completely, <laughs> but that's a different story. So to end this whole thing, uh, I will just say this. Um, they're all amazing instruments, every single one of them. I have not even played these yet because they were going to be stripped down and restored like I just did to that. Um, and I still want to make these things, and I want to put a, vet, you know, a good video together to show what these things sound like when they're stock. Um, I don't think I'll really upgrade them too much because I kind of just want to keep them historically like that. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things that every one of these guitars are worth playing. Every, every single one of them has been incredible. Um, you know, if, you, if you're looking to buy one of these kind of guitars, you can't go wrong. Um, some of these other ones, I'm, you can see, got the Samic Blue Saraceno. It's crap. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you can, you can actually look. I know it's a Yamaha video, but you look at these pickups, you can just tell how, how like level one these things are. They are just ugly. Um, you can see the difference between what a pole piece looks like on a custom pickup. I think that's a Fender pickup, or I think it's actually a DiMarzio, but when you look at these, you can just tell they're crap. You know, they're just, they're toys. And I think you can see a little bit, somebody either tried to do a blue hair signal signature or it was there and it just got rubbed off. So I was thinking about painting that one as well and doing a wrap on it, but whatever. So hope this was informative to help clear up some of the details. I know it was a little long winded, it's almost 23 minutes now. But the last thing I did want to point out is one of the reasons that makes this guitar and his tone so fat, okay, is there is a 22 frets on this particular guitar. All the other ones have 24. That means this is where that other fret would be and then another fret would be right there. And then this is where the offset pickup would be. So if you can see how tight those are compared to how far away the gap is. Let's put like a gap like here, bring it over to here. There's that much, there's a whole single coil's depth. Okay, a whole single coil's depth between that. So he gets to put that other, that tone a little bit further up. And if you ever know about when you're picking on strings, if you pick up farther up, you get that deeper, thicker, fatter sound. So that's why the RGZ 820Rs are the jam. They are the funk. Check out that video on, uh, on my YouTube channel where I review the red guitar and it's got the stock pups in it and you, you can see what that thing is capable of doing. So anyways, happy hunting. Hope this was informative and uh, you didn't fall asleep. Later.